any questions. And they're all in the same thing, John. So I'm going to do them all and maybe go to a minute and a half each instead of a minute. What is, your, what is your opinion on background checks and assault rifles uh, and handguns? What will you do to reduce gun violence? Should we arm teachers? Uh, I, I think I'll ask the rhetorical, but I'm going to be wrong. Do, how do you stand on preventing gun violence yet keeping the Second Amendment whole? And that's it's kind of asking both an overall and a very detailed question. This time we start with Pam, Cheryl, Jim, Jamie, George. Okay, so um, I was sorry that guns weren't one of the things we got around to uh, this year. Uh, uh, Dr. Fries and some of the other leadership and the Democrats uh, voted, worked with the uh, governor's staff, uh, but there was a lot of dissension because they were all into army teachers, army volunteers, and, and hardening the target of the, of the schools, whereas the Democrats were talking about more counselors and things like that. So uh, as a personal story, I, I grew up in a house with guns. My dad was a Republican. He was a member of the NRA. He was a hunter and an outdoorsman. But he always kept his guns locked and unloaded. And to this day, I have no idea where those bullets were. And I think he was a just-in-time hunter, like, OK, it's Saturday. I think I'll go buy some bullets and go out and shoot some rabbits for dinner. So we actually ate what he shot. So I think that there is a place for gun ownership if it's, if it's safe gun ownership. I don't think anybody needs to own an AR-15. Uh, and I think that anybody who has concealed carry should have some sort of a class. I think that there are many things that we could do. I do support universal background checks. I support the, all of the things that the March for Lives kids had, you know, banning the bump stocks, uh, raising the age on, uh, on um, when you can own a high-powered weapon to 21. Uh, and other ideas that have come up. For example, I mean, I'm so far to the left on this, I think we should have liability sh insurance on gun owners, you know, on gun guns. I mean, we have liability insurance on cars. Those are also high-powered machines that can be used accidentally or on purpose to kill people. So why aren't we insuring guns in the same way? And so, you know, those are my thoughts. I, I don't know if there was anything else on that list. So anyway, I uh, will move on to Dr. Fries here. Well, I think you all know that, um, that Dr. Fries's one of his major issues is preventing gun violence. Um, I spent probably 20 hours with him when I first met him, it, uh, shadowing him at the Toronto Department, and it was horrific. Um, the things that, that guns do to people. Um, Randy really wants to approach this as a public health issue, just like we did with automobiles. Um, and one of the things that, that he's really been pushing, like we started a petition to allow the CDC to start collecting uh, gun violence statistics, you know, that that's not allowed right now uh, because their funding will be taken away. So there's a lot of, of steps that way um, that, that he's very proactive with. Obviously, arming teachers is not something that, that he thinks is a good idea. Um, it, it really is, again, going back to the public health issue. How do we keep our kids and our neighbors safe while not impinging on, you know, Pam's dad's uh, ability to have uh, his, his guns? Assault rifles, obviously, um, I, should be banned. He is uh, completely for complete background checks, not just partial background checks, but background checks for everyone, gun shows, the whole thing. Um, so he's a, he's a good advocate, uh, he's tenacious, uh, but he's also respectful and smart about it. And I'm very proud to, to uh, of the work that he's done. I had discussions with Randy on this, and, and he and I agreed on a lot of points. One of the major points that I agree on, first of all, as a, as a member of the school board, I say no to teacher loaning guns. Uh, our district, as long as we have the board that we have, will never allow our teachers to have guns in the classroom. The other big problem, if you'll stop and think about the school shootings, who's done most of the shootings is kids. Kids that have been in those schools, kids who were bullied. And uh, if you look at, at the individual who shot Gabby Giffords, uh, 
this individual had some very mental problems. The same with the kid who just did all the shootings down in Florida. I, I think one of the major things that we need to do is we need to increase our ability to, to have mental health. And mental health in our, in our state, along with uh, our public education, along with other things, has been severely cut and damaged. I was talking to Senator, Senator Bartow about this when I was working with her on a bill for respiratory therapy, for our respiratory care programs. And the problem is, is they have <coughs> cut the funds for mental health so severely in this state that when people do try to go and get help for these kids, they're almost handcuffed. And so I think that what we need to do is when these kids are recognized, we need to immediately jump on that and stop it. But we also need to have more people understand or more education when they own a gun. As far as, as, far as keeping it locked up so that other people can't get to it except the actual gun owner. As far as the gun laws are concerned, I believe if you have a gun law, which if you go over here to Sportsman and buy a gun, you have to fill out the paperwork. I believe that that paperwork needs to be filled out. Even if you're giving that gun away as a gift, the person receiving that gun needs to have the background check done, because otherwise that would become another loophole. So thank you so much for whoever asked the question about the constitutionality of this issue. A few years back, I was the campaign manager for a blind, progressive candidate in East Valley who challenged Matt Salmon, who is part of the Freedom Caucus, and we ran the most ideologically left and progressive campaign you could imagine. He went to a gun show, non-sighted, and bought a handgun. That is constitutional. That's controversial. But that is the environment that is enshrined by the Constitution. The Supreme Court has given us some time to um, consider different laws that could apply. For example, it's constitutional to make you wait 10 days before you buy a gun. It's also constitutional um, to, to give you a gun um, without a background check with the private sale. This is a very murky territory. <coughs> I do believe that severe threat orders of protection which would be given by a judge, and anyone could petition if you're a counselor or a person who's law enforcement or behavioral health, and you would seize that person's gun for six months. The county, for example, gives away free gun locks, but gun owners don't use them because it messes up with the ballot. There is not a system where you can keep a gun away from heart, from kids playing with it or anything like that, if they're in a dangerous and threatening environment and a severe threat order of protection stop, would take that person's gun away for six months if there is credible reason to believe that they are a shooter, that they are a threat to themselves. And I think that this is a good way of going forward that has bipartisan support in Arizona already. The only thing is that the NRA, they meddled with it. And they said, don't do this or we're going to get angry. And I think it's time that we need to show our governor and our state government that we don't care about that when kids die. I think we need to remember that the Second Amendment <coughs> is just that. It's an amendment. It is not, as we've heard on the floor of the House and the State Legislature, it is not a God-given right. God did not give you the right to have an AR-15. God did not give you the right to have bullets that can pierce body, body armor. And we also need to remember that the Second Amendment starts with a well-regulated militia. There's nothing well-regulated about our gun laws today. In fact, the Republicans in our state legislature are doing everything they possibly can to weaken our laws. You ask any cop on the beat, you ask any EMT that shows up with the paramedics. The domestic violence calls are the most dangerous and the most deadly calls there are. And in a domestic violence situation, this is why gun violence is a woman's issue. In a domestic violence situation, if there is a gun in the picture, it raises 500% the risk of that woman being killed. We have far more people being killed from suicides 
and domestic violence than we do from school shootings. But by God, we've got children dying in schools. What the hell? And they do not want us to take away their Second Amendment rights? I don't want to take them away. I wouldn't take my father's gun away unless I had to. But I will regulate the laws that protect people. Our children should not have to go through active shooting drills in schools. This is one where we fight. We come together and we 